All right, guys, it's time to check out my all-time favorite exhibit from the museum, the What the Dunk section. I've got three pairs of What the Dunks and all the different Dunk SBs that make them up. Nike Dunks first came out in 1985, and originally they were basketball shoes that matched NCAA uniforms. But in 2002, Nike SB got started, and they started making Dunks. And Dunk SBs had more cushioning, more padding, and zoom air. This is a celebration of Nike SB. The What the Dunks came out in 2007, and they represent all of these different cool limited edition dunks. They're really a mishmash, a patchwork quilt of bits and pieces from all of these iconic dunk SBs. Come on over here and have a look at the What the Dunk Shrine. Super duper cool. So you'll notice we've got three pairs of What the Dunks, and the reason why I needed so many is because I wanted to display them so you could see all of the different sides and angles of the shoes so that you could see all the different bits and pieces that make them up. Not long after I picked up my first pair of What the Dunks, I was inspired to try to complete the set of all of the shoes that make them up. In 2008, this Soul Collector magazine came out, and it actually served as a checklist for me. It breaks down the shoes into the different bits and pieces, and I started building the set. It took me six years. And as I got closer and closer to completing the set, I found out that the magazine wasn't 100% accurate. I came across this Nike SB book. It's called Nothing But The Truth. Now, the What The Dunks first came out alongside the premiere of this movie, Nothing But The Truth. And this book breaks down the What The Dunk. It says that there's 32 dunks in one, but actually the book only counts up to 31 dunks and they make the what the dunk the 32nd dunk. I've got three what the dunks plus a pair of socks and on these tables, another 60 pairs of dunk SBs. So in total, we've got 64 pairs. Basically the exhibit has doubled since the release of this book way back when the shoes first came out. In this video, I want to walk you through all the bits and pieces of the What the Dunk, and I want to point out some of the discrepancies between the Soul Collector and between the Nothing But the Truth book. Now, this is the most comprehensive setup of What the Dunks that you'll ever see, and what I've decided to include are all of the different Dunk SBs that are even remotely a part of these shoes, and I'll explain more as we go through. Let's start with the most rare of all the shoes that's part of these. It's the eBay Dunk, and we're going to start right up here with these socks. So there was a pair of eBay dunks. They were made to look like eBay and they were auctioned off on eBay about 10 or so years ago. The pair sold for $30,000. It was one of one. And there was a sample eBay dunk that was cut into four pieces and the winning bidder got a perfect pair. So you'll see with these socks, I cut a pair of socks into four pieces and then kept a pair of socks whole, which would have been the ones that would have been awarded to the winner. Now the winner of the auction was Sandy Bodecker, the former head of Nike SB. Kind of funny that the head of SB is the one that paid $30,000 for these shoes, which definitely contributed to the hype of Nike SB. Since of course it would be impossible for me to have the actual shoes, I thought I would use the socks, but I also hired Mosh, the most famous sneaker customizer in the world, to make me two pairs of eBay dunks. And once I get them, I'm going to saw one of them into four pieces and keep the other one just as it is. Now, when you look at the left What the Dunk shoe, you'll see this green inner lining, and that comes from the eBay Dunk. You'll see the green lining on this. You can sort of match them up, and that's where the eBay Dunk is represented on the What the Dunk. That being said, let's work our way through the table. Come on over here. Let's check out the City Pack. The City Pack contained four dunks inspired by famous cities with sneaker followings. The Tokyo, the London, the Paris, and the New York City Pigeon over here. We're going to start right here with the Tokyo. The white dunk. Look at this. It's canvas. It's meant to look like a blank canvas. You'll see it doesn't even say Nike on the tongue. It also doesn't say Nike on the heel. The colorway on the box says muslin, which is actually the name for blank canvases. Now, the Tokyo dunk is actually not a part of the What the Dunk but I thought it would be fitting to start with a blank canvas before we look at all of these different Dunk SBs with the various inspirations on them. Now, sometimes Nike will release a shoe that's very popular, and so they'll release another one years later that's similar to the first one, and that's what we have here. These are known as the Untokyos because they're also white canvas. This pair has some navy blue accents and outsoles that are not worth nearly as much as the original Tokyos, but for the sake of completeness, I thought if we're going to have the Tokyos, 
we got to have the Untokyos. Now, to be clear, the Untokyos are not a part of the city pack like the Tokyos were, but remember, we're all about completeness here. Let's talk about the second pair from the city pack, the Londons. Look at this beautiful shoe. Midnight fog upper. Now, the reason why the color is gray is because the weather in London is rainy and foggy. And you're going to notice back here the River Thames is stitched on the back of the shoe. Something interesting about the London is that the sole collector said that it was the tongue of the right shoe. But when you look at the right what the dunk next to the London, you can see that the tongues are a different shade of gray, but also that the writing on the London tongue is in blue, whereas the writing on the what the dunk is in gray. So clearly sole collector was not right right here. The tongue actually comes from the Metacom 3, which we'll get to in a little bit. So the first two pairs from the city pack are not represented on the what the dunk, but have no fear, the third is. The third pair, boom, the Parises. This beautiful shoe was made up of a cut up work of art by a famous French painter named Bernard Buffet. Bernard passed away in 1999 and the work of art was made in 1998. This is the most desirable of all of the shoes in the city pack. Now look at the cardinal red swoosh right there. And you're gonna notice that it matches the cardinal red swoosh on the inside of the left what the dunk. Interestingly, the sole collector said that the laces on this what the dunk came from the laces on the Paris, but that's not true because the Paris actually did not come with red laces. It's the only pair of dunks from the city pack that did not have an extra set of laces. So again, Soul Collector messed up and actually these red laces, as we'll see in a little bit, came from the Heinekens. Now let's have a look at the last shoe from the city pack, the NYC Pigeon. Look at this beautiful shoe. It was designed by Jeff Staple, Reed Design Space. He said that the pigeon was representative of New Yorkers. These shoes are very, very desirable. There's actually a pair on Flight Club right now for $7,000. Crazy, right? So this is like the first SB that caused crazy riots and mayhem. When the shoes were released, there were riots outside of Reed Design Space. Have a look at this pair. It's laser etched 02 of 30. There were only 30 pairs that are laser etched. They're sort of the friends and family edition. Now, when you think of the pigeon dunk, of course you think of the pigeon on the back heel, and that is represented right here on the back heel of the right what the dunk. Now, because we have the pigeon and the friends and family pigeon, I thought we have to have the purple pigeon. The purple pigeon actually came out after the what the dunk, so it's not on the what the dunk per se, but to be complete, we had to have the purple pigeon to go along with the pigeon and the friends and family pigeon. Now let's have a look at the next pair, the Reese Forbes Denim. This is my favorite pair out of all of them on the table, and probably because it was the last pair that I was able to track down. There are only 444 pairs of these shoes in the world. This is a size 11, and it's very tough to find in any size, let alone a size 11. Back in 02, when Nike SB got started, they had plain orange and brown boxes. Nowadays, we've got these crazy glossy boxes. Now, I want to show you where the Reese Forbes denim dunk is represented on the what the dunk. And it's actually the back heel tab right there that says Nike. Interestingly, the Reese Forbes denim was left out of the Nothing But The Truth book. So remember how I said it said 32 dunks, but they only counted 31? This is clearly the one that they forgot about. I absolutely love this shoe. Let's work our way over to the Metacom family. Metacom 1s, 2s, and 3s. Here's the Metacom 1. Metacom is a Japanese toy company. You can see this beautiful two-tone blue and orange swoosh, and that's going to be represented right here on the inside of the right what the dunk. There are not a whole lot of two-tone swooshes, so it's real easy to spot that that's the Metacom 1. All these Metacom shoes were released only in Japan, and so they're also very tough to get in bigger sizes. Here's the black denim Metacom 2. This was the second to last shoe that I found to complete the set. It's funny, I was able to find all of them except the denim and the black denim. Again, very rare. They say in the Soul Collector over here that there's only 200 pairs of this shoe, whereas there's 444 pairs of the blue denim. Now, on the What the Dunk, you'll see this black denim right there, and that is where it's represented, the Metacom 2. Gotta love it. 
Let's keep working over to the Medicom 3, possibly the coolest 3M shoe of all. If you take a picture of this shoe with a flash, the whole thing glows. Look at this beaut. Beautiful chrome swooshes. Now, interestingly, the Soul Collector magazine says that this chrome swoosh right here comes from the Tiffany Dunk, but in actuality, it comes from the Medicom 3. You can see how around the stitching, around the perimeter of the swoosh, they match, whereas on the Tiffany Dunk, there's not that little bit of excess fabric there. Gotta love the Medicom 3s. And remember I said that the London was being claimed as the tongue for the right dunk? It's actually the Medicom 3. So you can have a look right there. The shades of gray match up. The font on the Nike writing on the tongues match up. So there you go. And actually, the Medicom 3 was not even included in the Soul Collector magazine at all. Now, the last shoe on this row, the Jedi, inspired by Star Wars. The Volt laces are supposed to represent the lightsaber. That's another real easy one to spot. You've got Volt laces on the right, what the dunk. I'll meet you over there at row 2, and we're going to check out the Supreme family. How fun is this? So we've got Dunk SB Lowe's, the white and the black. The Soul Collector magazine says it's the black one on the What the Dunk. The Nothing But the Truth book says it's the white one. For the 10 year anniversary of these shoes, Supreme made a red one. And elephant print was an option for Nike ID, so I couldn't resist but to make my own high top red one. So there you go. My own inspiration right here. I had to add to the table with my own dunk. And let me grab the left and you can see the elephant print going around the toe right here. And you can see that it matches up with either the white or the black. Now there's going to be a lot of shoes on this table where they would have taken the elephant print from one. And it's not clear if it came from one or the other or the other or the other. And so I have all of them. From the lows to my ID high, let's work our way over to the next set of Supreme Dunks. These are the highs. Red. Orange. And blue. Some of the cool details on these shoes are, of course, the stars on the upper, the crocodile print on the leather, and then the Supreme down there. It's pretty cool. Now, let me show you where these are represented on the What the Dunks. And we're going to start right here on the left shoe. We've got these stars right here. It's not clear which one of the Supremes the stars came from. I'm going to say it's the red one. And the reason I'm going to say that is because we've got orange right here. That's clearly the orange croc from the orange one. And then over here, we've got the blue croc going around the heel. But there is no red croc anywhere. So I'm going to say that the stars came from the red one. And that way we're able to include all three of the Supreme highs into the What the Dunks. Here's a mid that the colorway is Red Dragon, but people are calling this the Unsupreme. And really it's because of its resemblance to the colorway on these original Supremes. Had to include it, had to be complete. Let's check out the hemp family. These are amazing. The first 420 Nike shoes. The Bonsai's, the Blues, the Mahogany's, and then these came out years later, the Unhemp. And they're also called the Top Ramen because the color matches Top Ramen. Here's another example where we've got hemp all over the toe of the shoe, but we don't know exactly which one it came from. And so, of course, we've got to include them all. The rarest of all of these shoes are going to be the Bonsai's. There's only 420 pairs of these. Beautiful. So let's work our way over there to the front of the table and we'll check out a few high tops. The Lucky, the Unlucky, and the Huff. Let's talk about the Lucky and the Unlucky first. They were a pack of shoes. I'm going to grab some What the Dunks and come on over. So here we go, the Lucky. Gold and wheat, you've got the Lucky number seven on there. These are going to be represented actually on both What the Dunks. Here's a lucky number seven. Here's a gold panel right over here. And then lastly, the tongue, the wheat tongue with the green accents. Now, because you've got the number seven from the lucky on this shoe, you'd have to have the number 13. Notice that the unlucky has number 13 on there. And number 13 is stitched right there on the elephant print. Now, from Lucky and Unlucky, let's work our way over to Huff. 
Check out this Dunk SB High Top, a collaboration with a sneaker boutique called Huff, based out of San Francisco. The orange and black tie-dye is representative not only of the San Francisco Giants, but also of the tie-dye movement in the 60s and 70s that happened in Northern California. When you look at the What the Dunk right there, you can clearly see right around that swoosh, the Huff tie-dye. Now, the tie-dye were the first of the tie-dye family. We've got tie-dye mids. Check out the back right there, and you can see that cool, bright tie-dye print. These came out after the What the Dunk, so they're actually not represented on the What the Dunk. And then down here, the most recent 2014 black and white tie-dye. My favorite detail on these shoes is the colorful tongue. So from the tie-dyes, let's work our way over to the Shimizu. Daniel Shimizu is a Nike SB rider. When you look at the back yellow of this What the Dunk, you'll see the back yellow on the Daniel Shimizu. This dunk right here is probably the least desirable of all of them from the set. While we're at the back here looking at that yellow, you'll notice it says Buck right there. That doesn't mean money. Buck is Phil Knight's nickname. He was the co-founder of Nike. These University of Oregon inspired Bucks say Buck back there. That's where that inspiration came from. Pretty cool. Let's work our way over to the Cali, place I was born and raised. The Cali looks like the Cali flag. You can see right there, there's a little star on there. And that star is mimicked right there on the left, what the dunk. And also same thing with the midsole and the outsole. The green and red come from the Cali. Let's have a look over here at the Heineken. The Heineken is responsible for these red laces. They're the only shoes on this table that have red laces and they're included in the Nothing But The Truth book, but they're not included in the Soul Collector magazine. This is the progression of the Heineken family. It's part of the beer bottle pack. It came out alongside a Budweiser inspired shoe. Those shoes were on display in the beer, wine, and liquor section of the shoeseum. Let's work our way over to the De La Souls. High and low. Three Feet and Rising was their first album and it has the graphics that you see in yellow on this shoe and sort of tough to hold all of these at the same time. And on the back here, and the details on the De La Soul are a little tougher to find. You actually have to look at this lining right here that goes around the Blue Supreme. And it's the lining that goes around the Three Feet and Rising. Now, only the highs are represented on the What the Dunk, but I had to get the lows as well just to complete, complete the De La Soul family. Let's catch up over there at row number four. We'll check out a high and a low tweed, and then work our way into Carhartts and some other brown shoes. Very cool tweed pack. Check out the toe right there, tweed. The magazine and the book say they come from the low top, but of course there's really no difference between the low and the high. So for the sake of completeness, I wanted to get all of them. Let's work our way over here to the Carhartt, inspired by the work brand. Check out that material right there, sort of canvas, reminiscent of Carhartt jackets and clothing. When you look at this What the Dunk, you'll see this little panel right here matches the brown Carhartt. Actually, the colorway from the box is known as Shale. I used to pick those up at the outlets for $29.99 and sell them on eBay. I sold them all off, then started building up this set, and I had to look for one, and it was actually tough to find. And I remember thinking, man, why did I sell all those Carhartts? Next to the Shale Carhartts are the black Carhartts which are not actually represented on the What the Dunk, but for the sake of completeness, they've got to be here. And then let's look at the next pair, the Bison. It has nothing to do with Buffalo, it has to do with the colors. Look at the toe on the right shoe, that red that goes around there comes from the Bison, very, very cool. The Bison's a cool example of an all suede shoe. Look, even the tongue is suede, cool details. Let's work our way over to the next Reese Forbes Hunter Burlap shoe. This is actually the third Reese Forbes shoe. We looked at the denim one. There was also a wheat Reese Forbes. This one's very cool with this burlap upper. And actually, it's the lining, this orange premium lining that comes from the inside of that shoe. Work our way over to the next one, the Oompa Loompa, inspired by Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the 1971 classic, not the newer Johnny Depp one. When you look at this shoe, it's actually going to be the outsole and the midsole that are on the What the Dunk. You can see that it's brown and green. And now let's work our way over to the Shanghai's. Shanghai 1 and Shanghai 2. 
The Shanghai one is the red suede looking one. It's supposed to be reminiscent of the architecture and buildings in Shanghai. And also notice the writing on the tongue means good luck and fortune. And then next to there are the Shanghai twos. The Shanghai one is represented right here. And the Shanghai two, you'll notice this cross stitching pattern and that's right there. Now actually the Shanghai one was recently retroed in 2013 only in Shanghai, and I haven't been able to track it down. Actually, I found it on some Chinese websites, but I'm not sure if they're authentic, so I haven't pulled the trigger. So I know I told you that this set is complete, but there's actually a retro that I'm trying to track down. And it's not even the first Nike SB retro. There were Slam City Dunks that were retroed. Only 25 pairs of the second version came out. And then most recently, Nike took the Tiffany Diamond Supply Low and turned it into a high. So that's almost like a retro. I think Nike's going to do the same thing with a lot of shoes on this table. Let's continue on from these two Shanghais over to the Sabotage. The Sabotage is actually contained in the Soul Collector magazine, but it's not really on the shoe. When you look at the Sabotage, it's got this gold swoosh on here, and the Soul Collector magazine said that the swoosh on the What the Dunk comes from that. Let me show you those. There is the gold swoosh right there. But in actuality, according to the Nothing But the Truth book, the swoosh came from a Takashi sample. And so let's work our way over to the next two pairs, the Takashi 1, which has a gold swoosh on there. And then the Takashi 2 over here has a silver swoosh, but you'll notice that it has this laser etching on there. And according to the book, Nothing But The Truth, the gold swoosh came from a Takashi sample that has a gold swoosh, but also has laser on there. And the laser says family. Of course, that sample is going to be impossible to track down. So we're going to have to use the Takashi 1 and the Takashi 2 to represent that gold swoosh right there. Now, this was the last shoe that I actually tracked down because all the time I was chasing after the sabotage and then I came upon the Nothing But The Truth book and I was like, man, crazy, the gold swoosh isn't even from the sabotage, it's from the Takashi. And then I was like, man, it's actually from a Takashi sample, so I need the one and two. The exhibit just keeps growing and growing and growing. Let's look at the last row right here. We're gonna start up here with the Ray Guns. The Rochester Ray Guns were a fictitious basketball team. Players like Vince Carter were in Nike commercials around 2000 saying they played for the Rochester Ray Guns. You can see right there is the little Ray Gun logo and that's going to be represented right there on the back heel of the shoe. And again, in the book, in the magazine, one of them says white Ray Gun, the other says black Ray Gun. For the sake of completeness, had to get them all. Now let's look at the next two, the Boca Jr. and the T19. Here's another discrepancy. Boca Jr., by the way, is a football team in Argentina. They're saying that the blue right here on this little panel of the What the Dunk came from Boca Jr. That's what Soul Collector says, but the What the Dunk, Nothing But the Truth book actually says that it comes from the T19. So it's really just the difference between Sport Royal and Varsity Royal, and you can see how they got confused. I mean, that blue looks very similar to both. And then especially when you have the blue with the Volt laces from the Jedi, it sort of conjures up thoughts of the Boca Jr. From these, let's work our way over to the Sea Crystal Ice Green family. The highs are a part of the What the Dunk, the mids are a later release that aren't, and it's this back panel right here that is representative of the color on these Ice Green Sea Crystal Dunk highs and then later on on the mids. Let's look at the next four shoes, the Avenger pack. They were known as the Bankers pack back in the day, and there's four different models. There's blue and purple. There's a flat leather and a patent leather and a flat leather and a patent leather. The book and the magazine say that these blue pinstripes right here come from these. Of course, they don't come from the purple because the pinstripes would be purple, but the book shows patent leather and the magazine shows flat leather. So again, we have a discrepancy and I wanted to include both of them as well as both of the purple patent leathers. And then the last two shoes that are a part of the exhibit right here are gonna be the Tiffany's. You gotta love these 05 release. Nikki Diamond from Diamond Supply Company. This was one of the most hyped up Nike SBs ever. Probably almost rivals the pigeon. Anyway, remember I told you that this swoosh right here was said to come from this, but it actually doesn't. So let's have a look right there. And you can see, if you look closely at the swoosh on the What the Dunk, it's got that 
extra piece of fabric, whereas if you look at the swoosh on the Tiffany, it doesn't at all. And what does come from the Tiffany is actually this panel right here. Very, very cool. So recently in February, Nike decided to reissue the Tiffany Dunk and they made it into a high. Check it out right there. I was like first in line to pick up the high tops. Had to get them, had to include them in the set, but really this shoe opens up so many possibilities with the 60 pairs of shoes behind me and even with the What the Dunk itself. Imagine if they made that into a high top. Anyway, it's been a real pleasure walking you through my favorite exhibit in the collection.